Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, hosted by Makiba and Brittany, two former NFL cheerleaders discussing hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and revealing the truth behind the palms. Welcome to the very first episode of the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Makiba. I'm the sassy yet classy former NFL cheerleader. And this is Brittany. I have a face for podcasting and I'm the ginger beast. <laughs> so Brittany is this gorgeous redhead, my best friend, and she refers to herself lovingly as the ginger beast. I think I'm just the same height as her, even though I'm a little shorter, but how tall are you? How short are you? I'm I'm tall. I'm in the medium percent tall. No, I'm just kidding. I'm um, five three and a half. How I'm tall? five eight. You're not 5'8", you're 5'7". Five 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 okay, 5'7 and a quarter. <laughs> we round up around here. But this is our first episode of the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. We're super excited to get this thing going. We have been talking about it for, I can't say quite some time, because frankly the idea came about a month ago. True. Uh, but let's tell you a little bit about ourselves just to kick this thing off right. We cheered together for the Seattle Seahawks for... A combined total of 11 years. Five together, not always at the same time. But let's just tell you a little bit about our journey, why we became pro cheerleaders to begin with, how we became pro cheerleaders, why we're doing this podcast. Buckle up, Buttercup, because here we go. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. So, Brittany, let's go back in time. Ten okay. years ago, right? Ten years, ten years ago. Ten years I was ago. 18. Wow, that you just is told crazy. Your age. I'm not gonna do that. Well, I guess you're gonna figure it out, people. Yeah, uh, I was. yeah. Ten years ago, you were 18 years old, dude. You just started to vote. Yeah, I just graduated high school, and I was on a dance team called Cruise Control. Oh yeah. And I thought I was the coolest thing ever. It was like a hip hop dance team, and I didn't want to stop dancing out of high school, so we decided to uh, look into my options. And Seattle doesn't really have that good of a dance community. Yeah, Wouldn't because you agree? I'm trying to think. Were the Sonics even? The, this is when we had the Sonics. Well, did we even have them, or were they already gone by then? I can't remember. I think I feel they like were they, gone. Or were they gone? It was like tail end, I think. Ah, uh, interesting. Because I, yeah, at least I think. I don't I know think, why, but I something, picked football for yeah, sure in terms of me why. Me too. But um, why? How I ended up coming out for right. I had some outside. connections just because my dance studio. Uh, there was a few former cheerleaders that like taught hip hop and stuff when I was growing up. So okay. they told me that that was a resource. So and I started auditioning right 18. after I graduated. Yeah. Let's see. So t- 10 years ago, I was 30 years old and I just had my two kids um, birthday party the weekend of auditions. And I was, didn't know that. Yes. It was, they are back to back. So Yes. They're two days apart and I had a huge birthday party for them at my house. My daughter had just turned one actually. My son had turned three. You're kidding. I'm not even kidding. I was crazy. crazy. Yes. So that whole open call weekend was the day after my kid's birthday party. We'll definitely go into the whole audition process in a later episode. episode. For sure. But that that's when the journey began. So we both made it to the finals our first try. Oh, wait, we both yeah. started first year. So I, I snapped my hamstring in half <laughs> preparing I for remember finals. remember you, yeah. Yeah. But how did you feel? What made you want to come back after auditioning um, that first time? I kept trying to come back and pursue it because exactly every year I made it to finals. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like one step closer. You could taste it, right? Right. I was getting a little, not I won't say testy, but we, we tried out four times. Four times. We made it on our fourth try. It's definitely frustrating. Oh, yeah. I think my last audition... I was on this, I mean, I put my best foot forward and I kind of had this attitude that if they didn't pick me this time, then you were said you were getting a little testy. Well, it's just, you know, it wasn't clear. I think at the time, and I'll be honest, that we had one African-American cheerleader out of 28 hey. to 30 girls on the team. That's the truth. And I just thought we had a one black woman policy for a while and I was really getting a little frustrated with it and I thought... And I had a lot to learn. I mean, I came into the process without formal dance training. I cheered in college at Georgetown, and I just thought, 
you know, I'm going to fake it till I make it and just picking up the technique and all that. Yes, we did it. But, um, but yeah, I think because I kept making it to finals and you get no feedback really throughout the process, you just... There's three options. Yeah. What are they? Oh. Isn't it your, your, your body wasn't your best? Oh, that's right. Your dance ability... Or your showmanship. Or your showmanship. I was yeah. going to say it was your face. Did but that, she didn't say that. <laughs> that was a thing. It was like, if you made it into finals, I don't know exactly what it was. I still don't know. But it, you were just missing some it factor. Yeah. So do you know what you brought the year you made it? 2011, we both made it as right. rookies. What was it that year? Well, I, I didn't put bronzer all over my face thinking it was, um, you know, setting powder. <laughs> Good job. I literally did that. I had no clue. That was another thing. I had no clue about makeup. Yeah. I think it was the look like, came together a little bit exactly. that yeah. year. Um, oh, and I was really fit that year, too, because okay. I had just done, like, a fitness competition. Remember? Oh, I remember that. So yeah. I was probably in the best shape. I'm yeah. not in that shape anymore. I think for me it was probably... Just a little extra edge of confidence because I knew it was my last time. Because you were time. over it. I was a little bit over it. You weren't going to audition again? I really wasn't. Five is your lucky number, though. It is, but I wasn't going to be that it girl wasn't gonna that's going to that, audition. Yeah. I, was, I don't like rejection. Five years, I'm yeah. very sensitive. And I well, thought, it is hard. It is. Okay, this is really cheesy, but the year I didn't make it, I couldn't hear the audition song on the radio without, without crying. Oh, it's very traumatizing not Absolutely. making it. I mean, especially when you get that close. Um but I, I do think things just kind of came together. At first it was technique and I could really, and then one year I really, the routine and I just did not gel. It was some crazy. That can happen for sure. Yeah. And I didn't feel confident in selling it. One year, remember we were trapped. Well, not trapped, but there was a game going on and the sound yeah. people didn't come. And so different elements where I can say, okay, that was on me. But I did feel, okay, I'm prepared. I've done all I can do. I'm going to dance my butt off. And if they don't pick me, then I'm done. I'm done. Um, but not with a negative attitude. It was just, I felt like this was, this is it. Right. Where was your mind at, though, just originally in 2008 when your daughters won? I like, know. that's so crazy. I think been, a lot of people wouldn't even consider that. I think I was a little crazy. I call it my mini midlife crisis where <laughs> I felt like superwoman. Honestly, I think um, becoming a parent, you definitely pour so much into raising your family. Um, but I was starting to forget what I used to love to do and I had to start asking myself like I mean I was happy and I loved being a mom but it's like what else did I enjoy like who am I when I'm not just being mom and I remembered I used to love dancing my I mean I always will love dancing and yeah I kind of did the same thing researching like well what team can I be a part of I just moved back to the Seattle from the east coast and I looked at the audition process and I was like maybe I could do it like, because I could still do the splits. I could still do, like, I had my flexibility. When was the last time that you had danced, like, you know, Georgetown, you were a cheerleader. Yeah. But when was the last time before you, like, stepped into auditions? Like, okay, here I go. I got to have a minute, of you dancing. know, freestyle, first round. <laughs> what did you, like, come up with? What did you oh use gosh. to inspire you? Because um, I had a former dance instructor, like, come up with my stuff. Oh, I used okay. it every year until I made it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there's no, nothing love, exciting there. You know this about me. I do love choreography. and You're um, good at it, too. Oh, thanks. It's fun. Um, in my own mind, I'm good at it. But um, but I actually, you want to hear the funny story? <laughs> yes. I So I was practicing law at the time when I first started auditioning. Another, like, not psychotic, but, like, how did I think I was going to pull this off? But I was at my law firm huge firm in Seattle and I got my assistant and one of my co-workers Nancy that came yeah. to um I actually asked them to come down to the biggest conference room that we had so I can show them my one audition minute. piece my one minute uh choreography and I literally told them like listen if this is like American Idol and just tell me I the can't truth. sing like don't let me go out there auditioning and just oh, let me wow. know I don't have it anymore and it's okay. Like, I need the real deal, Holyfield. And um, so I danced for them and they were, I don't remember what that dance was, but they didn't tell me that I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't dance. And um, that's what kind of gave me, like, it's not just my family saying, you can do it, but just. Did I you throw in it. a kick and like a little turn oh, my, and all that stuff? Were, yes. Okay. So I don't you remember knew the minimum requirements. No, kinda. I don't think I threw some turns up in there. Okay. But my fan kick, my high kicks. That's always been your jam. Yeah. For sure. I, I mean, what I could bring to the table, I did. <laughs> but I mean, it was really confidence, right? You really feel like you have to put on the sass, put on the like, 
I got this chin up, chest out. See, I didn't have that. I didn't what? know what I was doing. I was so deer in the headlights, like scared. Thought everybody else was like so gorgeous and perfect. Didn't mm. put bronzer all over the face. <laughs> I looked like a tin man, you know. <laughs> like they had it together. And I was like, man, if only I could figure out how to be like them. Yeah. You know? So it was shocking when I made it. We, we did fought. Feel like... We had to fight our way up to the top. That's true. And then there's people who make it their first year and you're kind of like... That must be you nice. don't know the struggle, okay? okay. <laughs> Sit down. Even though you know how to do a coupe turn and all this stuff, it's not the same. Know. It's yeah. not. No, we definitely earned and fought our way onto that team. And so we cheered, like I said, together for that rookie season. And then we had a year off apart. I didn't make I, the team. You have to re audition every year. It's the new no squad every if year. You're a veteran, 10 years, five, yeah. first year. So, yeah. unfortunately. Makiba's second season, she didn't make it back. That was heartbreaking. It was. I yeah. remember crying. And they film. There's a live webcam. They filmed it. Yeah. And if you watch it back, you can see me like, like crying. you know how my face is like that guy in Vegas when you were hugging on him and I made that <laughs> face. We got a picture. I was making that disgusted like I wasn't disgusted, but like super upset. Oh my like, gosh. Frown face. I remember my mom was like, I could tell you were really upset. No, it, it was, was hard. It was really hard. It was a weird year. So I did two years back to back. And then the same-ish happened to me the yeah. following year, right? Yes. So we kind of like was bounced back and forth. The year I made it back on the team. Yeah. And, and was, then they went to the Super Bowl. We'll get I into know. that. But I know. The year I wasn't on it, Super Bowl. Then we got our year back together. Reunited and it feels so good. Go back to the Super Bowl only for us to lose. Dang it. Whatever. But then we danced for, what, two, three more more years? years after that. And then I I decided, oh, I'm going to do one more. No, you're so much younger. I mean, I I did five because it's my lucky number, and it was always my, my goal. And stopping at a point where I can go out on my own terms as opposed to getting pushed out like the old lady in the club. Um, I felt good out there. I, I mean, I enjoyed every, every minute, second. and I miss it like crazy. Yeah, but, same. Because uh, so when you was your retired. last season? My last season was 2016, and yours was just just this last this season. Last we were discussing that. We didn't know how to describe it because <laughs> technically you're working all up until auditions. So. Exactly. You're on the team up until that point. Um, but no, we both miss it. We're in retirement. We've re- hung up the pom-poms, so to speak. And I came to you with this idea about doing this podcast because we both know, um, and we'll get into it in later episodes, that their NFL cheerleaders, pro cheerleaders are in the news for like all the wrong reasons right now. Um, there's so many controversial lawsuits and, you know, there's kind of an unspoken code of silence around that these women have broken by coming forward and suing. But, you know, you really don't, there's no forum to talk about what it's like to be a pro cheerleader. And I just thought, how cool would it be to start a podcast? Follow the season. Follow the season. Follow the NFL cheerleaders. Follow NBA cheerleaders. Hockey has cheerleaders. That's crazy. There's a lot of semi-pro cheerleading teams out there. Um, But there's, we could build a community of current squad members. We have male NFL cheerleaders. We have, there's so many things that are pretty exciting in our space that, I just thought, why can't we just start oh, talking, talking about, about it? About it. Well, like yes. you said, 11 years of experiences, public appearances, We games. got some stories. Yeah. And we, and we have like an insider's perspective as to what people are reading about. And unfortunately, there's so much of a negative portrayal. And it's real, what these girls experience, these women, I should say. And um, But we can kind of give you our take on what that feels like. Um, how what, hard we really do work exactly and People just don't know that. being willing to say things that you unfortunately when you're part of the team you really can't you don't feel that you can speak as freely about and we support the men and women that are you know in our profession um, we would love to build a community of the alumni and just be able to reach out to people who are who want to become pro cheerleaders like there are like you said, there's semi-professional teams, and their goal is to be in the NFL. Yeah. I didn't even know that existed until you read these articles, and yeah. that's their goal. And then, unfortunately, they're hearing some things about their weight or the way they look. Um, 
but this could be like a very episode. Su- yeah, yeah, we could definitely create a supportive environment to talk about what it's like and weigh the pros and cons. I mean, if you're a director of a program and you're trying to run a team of, of women of all ages and shapes and sizes and maturity levels, I mean, there are some are some challenges and maybe some of those rules are as crazy as they may have been were driven from experience. Like, did you know that there was a rule for some team? I don't remember. We'll get into that in another <laughs> episode. But they literally had a rule about feminine hygiene, how often to change. That's so That's gross. That's gross. But, like, but that should just... But remember, we had the conversation about you shouldn't be stinky, and we yeah. were all sniffing our pits the rest of the practice. <laughs> like, well, who is it? <laughs> who is, she who talking is about? the stinky one? Just call out the busty girl. Right. Like, pull yeah. her aside and just say, hey, like, wear deodorant. But yes. we did have a deodorant talk. It wasn't we, coming from a rude place at all. No. Or, like, telling us what to do or you have to wear deodorant. But, but she was like, but we're she athletes. Had to say it. Let's like, not wear the natural stuff. <laughs> like, let's go for it and get yes. that degree up in the pits. <laughs> clinical degree (laughs) do what you gotta do yep so Brittany, we were just talking about armpits and deodorant is that what pro cheerleading podcast the truth behind the palms is about not necessarily but it is important to have proper hygiene right and they obviously felt like it was important to have that be a focus of one of their practices i guess which is which may explain why these rules came into being right But we're going to be talking about way more than armpits on this podcast. (laughs) Hopefully. (laughs) We'll try to keep it clean. But yeah, we're going to explore all different types of content, the pros and cons of being a cheerleader, um, all the hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry, the lawsuits. Um, What would you make of it? Why are we doing this podcast? Why? Why? Because our world is fun. I don't think a lot of people see what's really going on behind the scenes and then we end up having a very canned persona that we put out there but this is the stuff that really people really want to hear and know about i think it is fun it's fun to talk about we got some juicy tidbits yeah serious topics but a lot of fun stuff too story times about our years on the team together we have plenty don't we this segment that we have yes so we're gonna end every episode with locker talk which is basically like we've described before no we haven't (laughs) this is our first episode episode. (laughs) we've talked about it right okay so locker talk is basically going to be um a short little true story about us and our experiences in the pro cheerleading industry yes and Brittany and i as best friends have a lot of stories One of which comes to mind is a crazy little adventure (laughs) we like to call the Factoria Mall (laughs) thievery. We have an obligation as part of the teams to sell our calendars. We had a swimsuit calendar and we would have, you know, calendar sales at bars, malls, you name it, wherever you think you can sell it. And I came up with the grand idea to set up a calendar sale at Factoria Mall in Bellevue because it's a very, it's a strip mall. It's not even really like a mall mall, but I thought safe, you know, not too crowded, not too crazy. And maybe we'll make some sales on us. I don't know. Over the weekend, we had our little table. We were ready to go because you have sales goals, right? So it's kind of frowned upon. You kind of get in trouble. We'll talk about this more later, but you kind of, if you didn't make your sales goal, you were giving up your rent money to make that goal, right? There yeah. was a few years where some girls were crying in the hallway because you pay out of pocket. If you, you pay don't. out of pocket yeah. because it was it was calendars. doable, but you had to be proactive, right? Yeah. And so you came up with the idea to contact the local mall and sell our calendar there, and we were so excited. That mall is dead. There is never anybody in there, like ever. Hardly. But we had a good time. Like we were just catching up, chatting, whatever. It was like halfway between where we lived. And so we were trying to get some sales. I think it was our rookie year. So we were new yes. to the whole process anyways. Yes. And we, we just didn't really know what we were doing. Kind of like this podcast. <laughs> um, so we probably had a few customers come up. Like, what are the calendars? They're like $20. Yeah. So they're about $20. I think they were 15 back then because we had the oh, whole change issue. That's anyway, right. Whatever. Because every, 15, you know, if 20. they do have cash, they usually have a $20 bill. That's more common than 15, mm-hmm. a 10 and a 5, or whatever, what have you. 
So we were sitting there, and this nice girl came up and started talking to us. Her name was like Marianne Lewis or Mary Tyler Moore or something, you know, a three-part name that she was very proud of and just struck up a conversation, and she kind of made it clear that she was going to buy a calendar. Yeah, and if you're not paying close attention with all the small talk when you're selling calendars, you can tend to start making the calendar out to that person before you collect the bills. And uh, we had written... (laughs) To Mary Tyler Moore II, (laughs) twice removed. Where there's no other Mary Tyler Moore II, twice removed, that you could possibly resell this calendar for. Right, it wasn't like to John or something, where maybe you know another John. And then... Whenever we thought to ask for the money from little Miss Mary, <laughs> she's like, oh, they cost money? Or what did she say to like... She basically... Like no, she shammed us because she was like, yeah, sign it to my name. This is how you spell it. Like she knew, she had to have known it cost money, but she was hoping oh, she that if we role, signed like it to her, yeah, then we would just have, have to, to give it. it. Yeah. So we had this... I think I still have it in my trunk. We refused to give it to Mary because... <laughs> We got played, and we were like, no, you're not getting this calendar, but... uh, That was pretty funny. That was. We had plenty of other uh, stories. I was about to say, we did another calendar sale, and (laughs) poor Brittany, we were at a a fun little parlor, billiard, uh, pool, comedy hall place, and I think we were selling calendars in a line where people were waiting for the comedy show to begin we were in our one of our uniforms and lo and behold it was our skirt and halter skirt and halter top and Brittany this is so bad a man stuck his finger in my belly button and said some really disgusting things in my ear and I didn't know what to say except do you want a calendar still oh my gosh we had learned some things from calendar sales the best ones were where we would just eat and chill yeah, that's true. and watch the game with the fans. fans. Yeah. That's the best. They would look at you like, what are you doing here? But they, they would, would warm up to you. Warm up for to sure. You. How many times did we hear things like, I don't want to buy my husband that calendar because, you know. And then you get the, the wives and girlfriends that are like, oh, absolutely. I yeah. want a photo. I want five. I want one for my son. Like everybody. Exactly. My daughter's a dancer. She wants one. Sign it to her. Tell her to keep dancing. Exactly. Like, it's a positive experience, but it definitely puts you in a position where you have these stories like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> and belly button holes. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a comment, or review. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Pro Cheerleading Podcast. And also on Twitter at Pro Cheer Podcast. This is Brittany. And Makiba. Until next time. Keep your eyes on the sidelines.